You're listening to Curated Consciously, your all-in-one platform for navigating and nurturing your conscious living journey. Why? Because diving into environmental justice comes with heartache and a lot of damn work. We gotta do it, but as a community, we can make the load a little lighter. Every week, we're bringing you stories, insight, and wisdom from a diverse community of leaders, activists, and influencers, helping you live a more holistic lifestyle that connects your health, wellness, and love from Mama Earth. This podcast is sponsored by Cause Artists, the world's number one platform for social impact and innovation stories around the world. If you're looking to get inspired, hit us up at causeartists.com. And of course, I'm your host, Jasmine Ray, curator-in-chief at Curated Consciously and social entrepreneur. You can connect with me and our community on Instagram at Curated Consciously. Now roll your shoulders back, get comfy, put the coffee on. It is time to deep dive into some thought-evoking conversation, Curated Consciously. First off, I just want to say thank you to all of our amazing listeners. It is so exciting to see how popular our recent episodes have been. And it's just so exciting that we're diving into kind of heavier topics, trying to take that the, the podcast in the direction of really helping us uh, learn from you know a diverse community of people with knowledge and experiences and conscious living and you know who are tackling environmental and social justice and it's just been such an honor to um, hear uh, to hear feedback the comments and just people really enjoying listening to authentic conversation around these these often heavy topics so just want to send a huge thank you to all of you I'm so so grateful. Today, yes, you're just getting me for this episode, uh, but honestly, I was I was deeply inspired by my interview with Dr. Diti Harangari, a minimal girl, um, in our episode on minimalism, because we we got into a conversation around this idea of you know being an influencer or an advocate in you know whatever your your thing is. So you know for. For Dipti, she's you know obviously very deeply rooted in her um, her minimalist lifestyle and really advocating that and using social media to spread awareness about how to you know realistically approach being you know living a minimal life. And it got me thinking about you know this idea that yeah I've been somebody in the conscious living space for a while advocating you know first it went from sustainable travel then it went to zero waste travel then it just you know fully encompassing zero waste living, um, you know, with multiple kind of projects attached to that from, from Hada House to growing that into Hada World to Sustainable Travel Network to obviously leading Curated Consciously. And it got me thinking, um, you know, I would love to just open up about what, you know, that zero waste life lifestyle looks like and how it's actually shifted tremendously uh, this year, maybe tremendously isn't the best word. That sounds like a nice way of saying it. Like it's just, this year has been so challenging from in many ways in terms of how I live out my values, because, um, you know, as someone who has been so conscious about, about living a zero waste lifestyle and being really, really practical and, and approaching decisions around, especially making buying decisions, making them very, very conscious, you know, it's been an interesting transition, um, you know, now having been married in February, living with my partner, although we've lived on and off together for the last couple of years, you know, just trying to navigate, you know, the lifestyles that we have lived so independently and merging them together. And a lot of that, you know, thank, thank goodness, like, I, you know, I have an amazing partner who very much values conscious living and environmental justice and really, really uh, supports what I do and what I stand for. So it hasn't been as much of a challenge in terms of, you know, how we together take on, you know, kind of nurturing a zero waste household, but I'll get into that a little bit more. But another aspect that I wanted to reflect on is just how overwhelming the pandemic has been for, you know, in terms of me being able to, you know, effectively, efficiently, you know, live out my my conscious living values. And honestly, it's been a huge, huge barrier. And, you know, I, I thought today would be actually a great day to record this 
uh, podcast, which I actually was originally going to make a blog post because, you know, I woke up, looked around my kitchen and realized, you know, I had like three boxes of sweets um, because today is Diwali. And, you know, it got me thinking, I was like, man, I can't remember the last time my house was so stocked with like packaging. And, you know, it really hurt my heart because honestly, I, I have to be real about this. Like I have definitely had to transition from a zero waste lifestyle to a low waste lifestyle um, in 2020, mostly because of the pandemic. Um, you know, diving into that a little bit deeper, you know, at, when the pandemic began in uh, early this year. So I, I was just getting married in February when the pandemic was like, you know, basically COVID-19 was becoming uh, more of a global concern. I guess it was officially uh, announced as like a global health issue, I think on New Year's Eve. And, you know, you know, my family left from India, went back home to Canada. It was, it was the beginning of March. It was starting to really, really ramp up. My husband and I were in Rishikesh and then Holi happened. And then suddenly, I, you know, I remember being at the guest house and, you know, we had three, uh, three guests um, staying at Hada House um, from, I believe, Germany. And they were like frantically just like running around trying to get me to help them with their flights because their flights had been canceled. Um, and they would now have to like reroute through like Poland or something else because, you know, just because COVID has just had spread so widely and Italy was just like almost at its peak at that time. And then, you know, we basically and decided to close the house down. Uh, obviously there was no more travel, there was all these restrictions coming up. And then, you know, my husband and I were supposed to actually move to Bombay April 1st. And of course that didn't happen because the pandemic came in. So during that time, well, we're kind of packing up our lives, getting ready to go to Bombay, where of course we had all these amazing, wonderful dreams. You know, my husband's a music producer, working in the industry in Bombay is huge for him. You know, we were working on our second property in Bombay. It was gonna be such an exciting year. And here we were stuck in Chandigarh at my mother-in-law's house. And, you know, the first couple weeks were obviously terrifying and like, we're not gonna dive into it. This isn't an episode about the pandemic, but, and, but well, I mean, I'm talking about how the pandemic affected me, but you know what I mean. So you know, in, in after a couple of weeks of kind of getting used to this whole lockdown and understanding kind of how we needed to navigate everything, you know, I started kind of, you know, introducing my mother-in-law to some of the, the different ways that I, I kind of lived my lifestyle. So, you know, for example, I started bringing in new items from the kitchen into the kitchen that I, that I brought with me. So like, you know, natural cellulose sponges, which are biodegradable. Um, I started bringing in some of the natural soaps that we had. Um, and, and I even had coconut scrubbers for cleaning. So whether it was like cleaning the floor or anything, and so that we didn't have, we could avoid basically, you know, using any of those like horrible, shitty, spongy sponges. Um, and, you know, toxic cleaning products. And I was working on creating natural cleaning products we could use in the kitchen with lemons and, and natural enzymes and all this stuff. And, you know, my, and it, it, it was hilarious because I didn't really realize how much of a germaphobe my mother-in-law was. And, you know, a big part of me introducing these things to her was like kind of offending her. Uh, and also note that my mother-in-law only speaks Punjabi and I am still very much in my beginning, my beginner learning phase of uh, learning the language. But, you know, it was so challenging and, and also frustrating because like neither of us could really communicate what we were trying to, you know, what what, we, what, what the core kind of meaning of what, of why we wanted certain things the way they were. And my poor husband's having to get in the middle and like deal with that communication, wants to stick up for me, but respect his mother and like, you know, wants to have more sustainable things in the house. And it became, um, you know, it, it basically be, became me having to be like, okay, you know what, I should stop. Like, you know, this is, it's not fair. You know, I, I remember going through this with my family back home as well, back in the day, like kind of, you know, you can only push people so far. Um, you know, if, if it's not at the core of, of their values, not even the core of their values, it's not saying that my mother-in-law doesn't respect, you know, the environment. She very, very much does. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a challenge to introduce new kind of inconvenient kind of weird things especially to like a really cultural household but to your family and you know I, it got me thinking more and more about you know what that was looking like with my husband and and especially because you know transitioning from literally living in and managing a zero waste property to you know going to a new city and having to kind of find all the resources that you need um you know bring them into your home kind of kind of you know 
bring awareness to all the different things that need to be happening in the household. You know, for example, like my husband, every time he opens the compost, he probably, he like pukes basically. Like he just cannot do it. He cannot be near a compost. So, you know, there's also this idea of like having to delegate kind of responsibilities and who's accountable for what in terms of making the household sustainable. But that we didn't really even get to navigate until we ended up moving out um, in, oh, when did we move? I guess June to Mahali. And, you know, I started reflecting more and more on like, okay, so we have this new space, like what, what can I do here? And, you know, one of the biggest barriers for me was the fact that that area in Mahali actually didn't have a proper waste management system. So you can imagine how frustrating just that basic need, even if I, there was a way for me to get you know, to segregate my waste and make sure it gets delivered to the right place. Like I'm willing to do that as someone who values, um, you know, waste management and wanting to ensure that I can put as much back into the system as possible, especially since the pandemic began, because everything has been double, double wrapped in plastic, you know, and even, you know, of course, like there was a time where we were terrified and we were buying things obviously in plastic because we were scared to buy things loose. You never know. People are coughing everywhere, you know, in these like bulk stores or kind of like general stores where there's just loose like doll and, and chowl and all these different things that you can buy. And it's, it was hard. It was hard on my soul to, to navigate that. And, you know, and, but I started reflecting more and more and I'm like, okay, well, like where are the other times where I've been challenged, where I really found solutions to this? And, you know, I started thinking about me traveling, you know, how I used to travel a lot, even at Hada House. And, you know, I was always taking trains, you know, all about local transportation. Um, you know, sometimes I would, I would spring and get an Uber if I knew it was going to be like a terribly polluted ride of, uh, you know, rickshaw smoke and traffic. But, you know, and then I would go to my friend's houses usually because I didn't, I didn't have a place in, I only had a place in Delhi for a little while. And, you know, wanting to kind of incorporate those values into their household, but you, but you can't, like you're a guest, you're, you know, you're still traveling. It's not like you can just you know, force these things onto people. But I, again, the, a big, the, the message here is that just bringing awareness to it, just continuing to live those values, not having to force them into anyone's faces. That's really where that starts because, you know, at the end of the day, sustainability starts at home. And, and I say this, honestly, I say this all the time. I can't say it enough. I've been quoted like a million times in saying it. But you have to start within your home and you need to just stay dedicated to that and master that so that people in your community, whether, you know, even if you're living with a partner who doesn't necessarily live a fully, you know, isn't fully living zero waste with you or still, you know, isn't totally comfortable in, in making certain choices that you might have made for your lifestyle, staying committed to your choices, staying true to your choices and, and you know, not being snarky or like condescending about it. Um, you know, and, and I get it though. You can sometimes get resentful if you like, like, for example, there was like three days in a row where, um, like my husband brought like a plastic bag or maybe not three days in a row, but like there's three times in the short span of time where three plastic bags came into the house. And I was just like, why, like, why, you know, or we would order food one night because the, the subsy guy wasn't outside of our apartment. So we weren't able to get subsy from anywhere after a curfew. And, just watching this waste come into the household, I was like, this is just disgusting. And honestly, just staring at it made me upset. And it, it's it's funny, it also, just that idea also made me reflect a lot on just city living and like people who are living in the city alone, who are like, are working, you know, eight, 80 hours a week kind of thing. They're working Saturdays, especially in India, there's like a six day work week, which is ridiculous. And, you know, not having time to cook your own meals, not investing the time to really like connect with your food and connect with the things in your home that bring you joy and food being a huge part of, uh, you know, my culture here. And just something that I value obviously as well as like really putting time and intention into the food that I eat, seeing these plastic containers come in and out of your home. I can, I can't even imagine what that would do to someone long-term if they're living like, you know, the solo bachelor city life, but Anyways, that I feel like that's a conversation for another day, but it really le leads back to the fact of how much seeing waste come into my house was affecting me. And it's, it, it's still, it's, it's still heavy. And I know that sounds ridiculous. It's like, Jasmine, come on, like relax. It's just like a container. But the amount of times that I use my voice in the pandemic to empower people. I sometimes yell at people. I'll be honest. I, I, there was some angry moments there because people were just so ridiculous with their like plastic bag on plastic bag for, you know, one thing that's already wrapped in plastic. But, you know, being at like 
sub-sea stands, vegetable stands, and basically, you know, communicating with people there, being like, hey, like, why didn't you bring your own bag? Like, it's actually safer for you to do that and, like, trying to kind of bring these conversations out. But it's like people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to be told that they are possibly doing something wrong. Nobody is ready to look within and really deal with that shit. And that's basically why I started this podcast. Um, But, you know, it's, we can't, it's also, we can't force it on people. And it's also not our job. So that's why the biggest part about this is really, you know, in your conscious living journeys and trying to go for a zero waste lifestyle is just being honest and authentic about it and staying true to your values and how you can make an effort. So just to give you an example. So, okay, I originally started this this episode to talk more about like living with your partner and helping them go zero waste. But now, now we've got a whole array of information here. But ultimately what I wanted to do is just dive into, sorry, my dog's beside me so you can hear him like moaning and sleeping. And there's also a man chopping wood outside. So I apologize. I just moved. We, uh, we just moved in the mountains uh, just above Manali, um, which has actually been fantastic for going uh, zero waste again, because it is so, so easy for us to access everything locally uh, without packaging. Um, yes, we still have cookies and Diwali, uh, you know, sweet boxes in our house, but I'm also not going to feel guilty for that because honestly, at the end of the day, I'm always going to feel guilty for bringing waste into my house that I know I might not be able to put back into the system or that I can't easily uh, rid of and, and, you know, allow it to go back into our earth. And being an advocate or like an influencer in this space, honestly, you do constantly feel like you're being judged constantly. And, you know, that's, that was that, that, that part of the conversation I had with Minimal Girl where I was like, damn, you know, I never really reflected on this more that I am terrified for someone to be like, hey, Jasmine, like, you eat cookies in packaging. And it's like, yeah, why? but why am I so scared of that? Like, I'm not perfect. I've actually never said that I'm perfect. But my values and my, 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 my vision for what I want to bring to this world and what I want to leave for this world and what the world will give me is what helps me thrive. And when I do make a mistake, like eat a cookie from a package, Trust me, I feel like shit enough, so you don't need to yell at me. But also, since the pandemic, it has been crucial for, I believe, every single person. I mean, I've even seen major influencers on Instagram just in the pandemic just fully be have breakdowns being like, I can't, like, I haven't been able to be zero waste because it's so impossible to source anything with so much stigma. Um, and obviously the need to make sure that everything is clean because we don't want to be bringing COVID into your household. And like with 4 million rumors about it, it could it could last forever on like a plastic bag or your eggshells, I don't know. But this idea of, you know, wanting to do good, knowing that you can't fully do everything in your power at this moment, and then also sometimes giving in to nurture your own mental health or just eat that chocolate to make you feel better, it, it's a lot. Like, trust me, maybe the chocolate's happy, for, you know, I'm happy with the chocolate for a couple of minutes, but like knowing that shit, like, okay, what am I going to do with this, you know, little cardboard box? Okay, maybe I can put it in my, in my tandoor for fire, sure. But, you know, a cookie package, so any kind of like Tetra packs or mixed, or mixed weights trash, those are like impossible to get rid of, especially in the mountains. So that's why it's even more crucial now than ever that we do get back into living our core values and sticking to how we can find things that are without packaging, um, that are locally sourced, that support the local community. Because again, I, I'd like to think that Zero Waste also has a huge role in actually supporting local and, and, and very community centric in order for this kind of lifestyle, you know, circle, cycle. It is, it's a, cause going like a zero waste, a living a zero waste lifestyle is supposed to be a circular lifestyle. So bringing that circularity to it. But also, I wanted to give a few examples. So I'm going all over the place here, but I, I'm, I feel like this is all gold, I, I think. So you can let me know by commenting on the episode to let me know how you felt about it. But some of the ways that the reason Alan and I are able to live a zero-waste lifestyle is because we actually make huge, huge choices around our food um, and the products that come into our kitchen, which influence the rest of our household because food is, is such a connection for us. Um, especially with a growing German shepherd at six months who eats like crazy amounts of food. So just looking at the food aspect within your home, um, obviously our scraps, um, we're not actively composting here because we don't have our garden set up yet. We've just moved, but all of our food scraps um, can be 
buried back into the dirt in the back um, in the forest. Uh, they can be given to the cows since we eat mostly veg. Um, some of our food scraps actually end up um, as veggies in our, our dog's food. So that's everything from like the bottom of cauliflowers um, to broccoli stems. Um, so all that kind of stuff goes into his food along with chicken, which we actually source directly from a butcher. Um, he bags it for us in a wrapped in newspaper in our own uh, reusable bag. Um, I then wash it and cook it and give that to him. And then all the bones um, are usually eaten by other animals in the area. Um, and then there's things like, you know, think certain pro products like eggshell um, trays, for, sorry, egg, eggshell trays, egg trays. Um, you know, we use that cardboard to help us start fire in our tundra, which keeps us warm at night. Because another thing that was like, oh my gosh, when we got here is I realized how much wood we were going to have to go through in order to keep our home warm in the winter living in a village in Himachal. So, you know, there's it's give and take on both sides. But some of the things that we're able to really do easily is be super, super mindful of water. And we're actually actively involved in, you know, making sure that the, the community is secure with water. So I think in the next week, we're headed up to help... Um, and put a line that comes directly from a stream so that the village can have water. And there's about 15 houses here, so it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. Make sure that everyone has water for the winter since it freezes quite easily in, in the mountains. Um, but some other things that we do is obviously supporting local. Um, you know, if I'm not able to find it here, I and but I and I and I really need it. Like honestly, if I really need it, then I'll go online and, and I'll get it shipped to myself. And you know, that was something that I was really struggling with uh, with Hada House and Beacon here as well because it was so hard to find. Um, you know, different types of products sourced zero waste. So, you know, it was easy for us to get kind of the regular grocery items. We can get those in bulk. Uh, but then there was things like, um, you know, all of our, our dish scrubs. So like all of the coconut scrubbers and the cellulose fiber scrubs, um, you know, I guess actually more, most of the other things were actually all zero waste. So maybe I'm, but I guess some of the other things in terms of like, for personally, like face, wash, face washes and stuff like that that I would get from like conscious brands that I'd have to ship in. Those would be zero waste, but I still have to ship them in. Um, and oh, I th and I think we had to also ship in quite a few different blankets um, for Hada House for our dorm beds and stuff because we weren't able to access what we needed in the city. And, you know, that still produces waste, you know? So it's like, there's always, uh, I feel like with everything, you have to just be balanced because, you know, perfection perfection is individual. It, it really is. There's no such thing as perfection. But the important thing here is that if we just, I feel like I get so cheesy with these freaking quotes, but like, you know, if every single one of us just did a little bit more in our journey, you know, it would make the world a more conscious place. It would put our earth first in so many beautiful ways instead of, you know, a few people aiming for perfection. Um, so I just want to make that known because dr you can literally drive yourself crazy. My mental health has suffered so much because of my values, not being able to fully live them and also living in this chaos of a fucking world currently. So I just want to let you know that nobody is perfect and it is okay to find that balance. And another thing that I want to add there is, you know, I'm able to support really incredible brands that, you know, that align with my values that... Um, so that I can have, pro you know, nice products like face washes and body soaps and et cetera that are sourced zero waste and even shipped within zero waste packaging. However, that's a luxury. That is a luxury and that is a privilege. And it is, if that is not something that is easily accessible to you, whether in terms of location, because right now, honestly, it's not even, I can't even really get things to my house at the moment. Um, but also in terms of affordability, this is a choice. And if it is not accessible for you, you can't be hard on yourself. It is not supposed to be expensive to live a conscious conscious lifestyle, just like Dr. Didi Gandhi said, a minimal girl. I keep going back and forth between her names. And it's so important that we understand that, again, because your mental health also needs to be put first. You do not need to do things just because it's on trend. You do not need to buy things just because it's the better alternative. Being resourceful with what you have is the key to living a more conscious lifestyle. And when I talk about resourcefulness, I also mean that in mindset. How can you be resourceful in changing a, a pessimistic outlook to a, an optimistic one? And trust me, I'm challenged by, by this a lot. And it's something that I've definitely had to, 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 to struggle or so yeah, I definitely had to navigate a lot on my own, but it's a great place to start. And once you start realizing how resourceful and abundant you are with, with, from within, 
you start to really easily identify opportunities to live a more conscious lifestyle. So I won't make this a super, super long episode, but wanted to jump on here, get this going, kind of, you know, this has been a, a bigger part of the conversation in the last 10 episodes. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of, you know, kick off the next 10 <laughs> with me kind of reflecting on what's happened in this year and what it's looked like. But don't you worry, there are tons of a million more episodes coming away, I promise. Well, maybe not a million, but who knows? Let's see. Let's see. Maybe we'll get to a million. That's a ridiculous fucking goal, Jasmine. Um, but let's see. Let's try and manifest it. Uh, <laughs> my God. I, sometimes I listen to myself after I record these and I'm just like, what a gal. Um, <laughs> but again, so I'm here. If you want to connect with me in our community, jump over to the Conscious Badasses Facebook group. So that's just facebook.com slash group slash Conscious Badasses. And there's also a link in our Instagram bio as well. We continue the conversation after the podcast um, with our community to dive into these topics more, to, sh to, to share our memories, share experiences, share questions, share exciting things, small wins, celebrations, everything on there. And, you know, I'd love, love, love for to, to connect more with our listeners because um, you're there and I can see you in the back end and I see your few comments and I see people starting to kind of pipe up, but I would love for our community to get even more vocal. This is your space to do that. So take over. Now, if I could leave you with just one piece of wisdom, I have been actively pulling tarot cards every morning after my morning ritual. And I encourage you during this time of transition, Scorpio new moon, uh, ending the year. So, you know, a second wave, a new president of the United States. I recommend that you start really finding a ritual that works for you on a daily basis. That's going to help you nurture your mindset so that you can start authentically living your values, understanding them, connecting to them, and, re and knowing how to take action and fully live them. You got this, and our community is with you. Inhale the goodness, exhale the bullshit. Thank you for listening, and thank you for doing the work. Be sure to jump over to curatedconsciously.co for more stories, tips, and inspiration for nurturing your conscious living journey. And be sure to follow along on Instagram at curatedconsciously. Huge shout out to my incredible husband, Profound Sound, for the original dope tracks. Hope you all enjoyed, are feeling a little lighter, and are going into a beautiful and blessed day. <laughs>